Hey, it's Sean from Tested, back with a new shop tip. Uh, today, we are going to be taking a look at threaded inserts, different types, and where you might want to use them. So, threaded inserts. Um, in the instance where you may need to you put machine threads for a machine bolt or screw into an object, whether it's wood or metal or plastic, we're going to talk about um, the different types used for different mediums. So the first one that we'll look at is probably the most common that you will find at like a, a typical hardware store like Home Depot or mom and pop shop or whatever, and that's threaded inserts for wood. So sometimes a wood screw is not what you need. For example, I needed to put leveling feet on the bottom of a wooden cabinet, and uh, I needed a machine thread for that leveling foot to go into. So probably the, the, the most typical threaded insert you're gonna find for wood are these T-nuts and uh, you'll find them at Home Depot and other places like that. And you simply drill a hole the size of the threaded portion into the wood, and you then just hammer it into place, which I've done already for you. And the teeth of this will bite into the wood, uh, keep the threads from turning, and give you a machine screw uh, threaded insert. Um, these are fine. The problems you run into with these are, um, they typically do not sit very flush. So if you're in a situation where that's not gonna work for you, you're gonna have to look for a different uh, type of insert. And I've had them tear out of the wood before, both just, just popping straight out or actually tearing the wood, but those are typically under extreme circumstances. And for most uh, areas where you're gonna need a, a threaded insert in the wood, these will work fine and they're cheap. My particular favorite are these inserts that you screw into the wood. So just like this, you, you drill a certain size hole uh, based on the manufacturer's specification on the package, and then they have a, uh, a hex key opening on one end that you then use to drive into the wood. So the, it has these coarse blades on the outside that really bite into the wood and cut well, and then you simply Screw it down into the wood until it's at the depth that you need. And we'll switch to the more leverage. And there you go. So we have a threaded insert in our wood that will allow us to go in. Um, now they make a few different ones. Uh, they also have the flanged version, which I am a big fan of because it, can, it gives you a little bit uh, more strength. For example, if you're worried about this pulling out of what you're, uh, the wood that you're putting into, you put the flange on the back and then thread it from the opposite side. And then you have the additional strength of this flange over here that is uh, going to make this far less likely to pull out than just the, uh, the blades on the outside alone. Um, so those are those are the ones that I would get versus the the uh, T-nut. So those you can usually find at the hardware store um, without having to do a special order. Uh, okay, so next we're going to talk about doing plastic. So I do a lot of plastic uh, inserts into plastic um, for 3D printing and other fabrication uh, projects. And uh, once again, you can thread in the plastic. I thread into, um, like directly thread in the plastic. I've done that with lots of 3D prints. Um, you just model the right size hole into your 3D print or drill the right size hole into your acrylic. And I have successfully cut threads. Acrylic's really risky because it's kind of brittle and you will easily strip those threads out. But 3D prints, I've done it over and over again. Unless it's mission critical, I feel fine just cutting threads right into the plastic. Now, what I will usually do with a 3D prints if I'm doing that is you have your perimeters or how many walls it draws around, say, these holes. I will up that to maybe three or four so I have a decently thick wall um, that will give me something to bite into. I also do that for any of the inserts that I use in 3D printed plastic, just to give the, the walls that I'm melting into or, or hammering into a little bit more strength. Um, and they make tapping uh, setups for plastic, specifically for plastic, for cutting threads in plastic, which I have successfully used on acrylic, but it, it's a little risky. So my particular uh, favorite for the plastic are just the, you know, the, the same thing, it's a press fit. 
Um, it has a little slot on one end, which allows it to uh, collapse a little bit so you can hammer it into place. And then as you screw your bolt in, it expands it, the little knurls grip the sides of the hole and it locks into place pretty firmly. So for example, I have, I have 3D modeled the right size hole based on the specification that the manufacturer has. We just tap it into place and now I have a thread ready to go. It will be a little tight um, screwing this in the first time because it has to expand that split area. But once you get it through the whole way, it should turn easily and uh, not come out. If you need a little bit more secure setup in like a 3D printed part in particular, that's when I might move to the heat set inserts, which are these guys. They look very similar except no slit and they typically have a little taper at one end to facilitate getting into the hole. Um, with heat set inserts, you basically use a soldering iron uh, to melt to heat up the insert itself, which melts the plastic around it. So it sinks down in the melted plastic. The plastic cools and solidifies around the knurls that are on it, locking it in place. Uh, these, this doesn't work for everything. You can't use it on say like acrylic, but a lot of uh, common plastics like ABS or PLA for 3D printing works great. You do have to be a little careful about um, not getting it too hot because you can start to deform the piece that you're going into. So basically, we put it on the end of the soldering iron. I already have it heated up. And we simply squish it down in there. Like so. That's gonna be pretty hot right now. We'll let it cool a little bit and it'll uh, cool that melted plastic around the knurls and not come out. Sometimes if I want a little bit more uh, additional security, I will dab the soldering iron just around the rim to kind of melt a little plastic over the edges. But that's not always necessary. You can technically use a regular soldering iron to do this. The problem you run into with that is that most soldering irons have like a, a, a cone shaped tip. And as you put it into the insert, it can want to jam in there. And then what will happen is when you try to take the soldering iron out, it just pulls the insert back out with it. And that's why I've been, I use these specifically for heat set stepped ones that aren't uh, gonna get jammed in the piece. And they just make uh, the right size for whatever size insert that you're putting in. But that's, that's not necessary. You can always get away with the careful use of the soldering iron. So melt in heat set threads. And finally, um, we'll go from the 3D printed stuff to the, this is acrylic, these are, um, sides to my ghost trap and I was experimenting with using these instead of the 3D printed parts and I did successfully th uh, thread into this. It's acrylic. I got a plastic tap and I was able to do threads and they were pretty sturdy but if you're going to be taking it apart a lot or if you get a little overzealous on tightening the screws it just breaks them all off. Um, the other problem I have is I have these weird shaped uh, figure eight holes on this that um, are to accommodate different size plates on the outside and a um, uh, doing taps into that doesn't work well because we don't have a full hole. So I'm using my favorite ones here, which are the ones that are through hole inserts. So they're flanged and slitted on the back. And that then means that as you screw your, your uh, screw through, it expands it and it holds it in place and then the flange will keep it from pulling out this way. Um, and, or you could just use the, the regular non-flanged ones if possible, but I like the flanged ones because they give you a little bit more security. Last one we'll talk about, which is not, you, is not as commonly used, but it's nice to know about it, is, is for doing threads in metal. In, so threaded inserts into metal. And I know the very first question you gotta ask is, well, why don't you just, you know, use a tap and cut threads into the metal? Which, very good question. Um, and, and Adam's talked about tapping and, and using dies and stuff like that before. And that is the go-to. Like if I, if I can, I will just cut threads into the metal itself. But there are certain instances where you may not be able to do that. So for example, let's say you have an object and you strip the threads in the hole. And for whatever reason, you, you have to replace the threads with the exact same size for the exact same screw that is on the mating piece. Well, typically 
if I was going to do uh, like repair broken threads in, in metal, I just drill it out the next size up and use a bigger screw, but that's not always possible. So what you do in that case is you have to have something that will replicate the original threads. So uh, the easiest is probably this guy, which looks similar to like the wood ones that has threads on the outside. It's slotted on the end to allow you to use a screwdriver on it. And then it has the original size threads on the inside. So the idea is you drill out your piece of metal bigger than it was before to match whatever threads are on this. You do cut threads with a tap for the outside ones. Then you screw this into place, which then restores the original size threads for the original screw. And you'll notice it has this red goopy stuff on the outside. That is a, a pressure sensitive thread locker so that once you get it into the hole, it actually glues it into place because you don't want the insert turning with the uh, screw that you're putting into it. So that's, that's probably the easiest and cheapest way if you need the same size uh, threads in a piece of metal. And I have found these at the hardware store, usually not a big selection, but they do have them, but also might be a special order situation. The, the fancy version of that um, are helicoils. And Adam was kind enough to let me borrow some because I, I don't have any because they're kind of pricey. The, the coil itself, the insert itself is not pricey. The tools, the specialized tools to install them are. So the advantage of helicoils is that it's basically as small as possible while still uh, restoring the original size threads. So, uh, you know, a, a equivalent of this type, the screw-in type would be far more, uh, it would be a fatter insert. So with the helicoils, you drill the appropriate size hole and then you use the included tap to cut the threads for the outside. And then you use this special tool which engages with tang on the bottom. And then you use this to screw this into the opening. Um, and like I said, it, th these are great. They're really strong. Uh, they are not easily going to come back out. Um, they take up less room than the alternative, but the sets getting set up with it is expensive because you can't really get these in without the special tools. But helicoils um, are really cool. And, and if you have the need for them, they may fit the bill. Finally, um, there are different press fit threads that you can get for metal. And I have an example of one here. This is a rivet nut. And you would use this in the case of, uh, I used them for a baking cabinet that my wife built that had a sheet metal bottom and I needed to put leveling feet on it. So there's not enough room to actually drill into and cut threads because the sheet metal is so thin, but it is strong. And basically I use these rivet nuts, which you uh, drill a hole big enough for this to fit into. Um, and then you uh, typically have a pneumatic or hydraulic tool that then collapses it just like a pop rivet. Um, I couldn't afford that, so I bought the hand tool, which it makes it a lot harder, but it worked. And basically the center mandrel here, you screw into the insert, this goes into the sheet metal, and then you basically use this to collapse this and mushroom it out so that it, it holds its place into the sheet metal. And these work great. Um, they're just harder to install, especially something big like this that I needed for my leveling feet. But it is an option out there called rivet nuts, and you can get hand tools for them that are uh, pricey, but still cheaper than the, the helicoil setups. Um, but that's a, that's a little overview of threaded inserts and uh, the types that you can get for different materials. Um, and you know, you can, you can use them for 3D printing projects, which I do a lot. And it, it is a useful tool to add to your arsenal. Um, I'm, I didn't cover all the different types by any means, so be sure to leave your suggestions and favorites in the comments. And uh, if you have any questions, please let us know and I will, I will always try to answer them. Uh, so until next time, this is Sean from Tested signing off with another tool tip.